Dear colleagues, since President Rodrigo Duterte took office, the human rights situation in the Philippines has eroded in a landslide. There has been an appalling number of extrajudicial killings and human rights violations. This has been going on for years, and this House has asked the Commission to act the last time in 2020. And it pains me that the Commission has, in fact, not acted. The only thing that has happened since is that the human rights in the Philippines have worsened. More Filipinos have suffered. In fact, the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights estimates that between 12,000 and 30,000 people have been killed in Duterte's so-called war on drugs. Around 6,000 6, people lost their lives during police drug raids alone. For me, as a Democrat, it is unbelievable that President Duterte personally anchored extrajudicial executions and even promised immunity to perpetrators. Another way, and I'm sad to say this, but a popular way to silence anyone who does not support the regime is the alleged fight against communism. The so-called rat tagging has even been institutionalized in the anti-terrorism law. This rat tagging is the procedure where the authorities link organizations and individuals to communist groups and use this as an excuse for killings, threats, warrantless arrests, harassment, and sexual violence of human rights defenders, opponents, and journalists. One can ask now, what leverage does the European Union even have to react to this? Trade policy. The general scheme of preferences. The preferential access to the single market is a tool to support less developed countries in their economic growth. It is a tool to help communities and individuals enhance their opportunities through trade. But this access comes with conditions. And the respect for human rights is the most important requirement a country has to meet to even qualify for these preferences. The Philippines does not respect the agreed human rights standards. And still, the regime profits from these trade benefits. I said it many times before, and I will repeat it today. The European Union is not yet the diplomatic power we strive to be. But we are an economic power promoting value-based trade. But this will only stay true if, while we wholeheartedly advocate for free trade, also make sure that the great conditions are actually met. Colleagues, I'm going to be very precise. Today we asked the Commission, set clear goals and benchmarks, and if there is no substantial improvement and willingness from the Philippines government to actually meet their human rights obligation under GSP, then we expect you to withdraw the trade preferences. This House will not accept any more inactivity, and we will not compromise on our European values. Thank you, colleagues.